Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health, one topic at a time. So guys, today I have a product review, and it is the AA95 by Armbrust. Yeah, so recently I did a video called A Prerequisite Conversation about N95s versus face masks. I'm going to link that video here because it truly is a prerequisite. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I have talked a lot about face masks versus respirators. I got a comment not too long ago by somebody, some constructive criticism, let's call it. Somebody said that I tend to overstate the leakage when it comes to a respirator and I understate the leakage when it comes to a mask. And you know, I got to thinking about it. I thought maybe, you know, that's probably a little bit true just because we accept leakage when it comes to a mask. That said, I've tried to find both with my criteria and with my reviews and evaluation and some scrutiny of face masks, I've tried to find things that will rival the respirator. And I think I've been pretty successful, particularly I've recommended that DNA mask, which for me, I get a fit that is oftentimes competitive with a fit I get with N95. And now some of that depends on your facial shape and whatnot, but you know, it's not only about the medium. And I think that's the point I'm trying to drive home is that sometimes people will say, well, uh, masks aren't good enough. So I'm gonna reach for a respirator because the respirator is designed to filter a certain particle size with a certain filtration efficiency. And they neglect to recognize that when something is offering enough resistance to filter down to a very small particle size, that's also offering enough resistance that if there is any room for leak, the air being that it takes the path of least resistance will go around it. So you'll be breathing in and out through around the respirator if it is not properly sealed. Now that's why I've limited what I will review of respirators to mostly things that have the approval of NIOSH because that means that they have stood up to a certain scrutiny. It means that they do qualify as respirators by US standards, which means they have a head strap and they do not allow for a leak. Now, that doesn't mean that in real world conditions, it's not going to leak. So if you're getting leaking, you're not going to get the kind of filtration that this stands up to in the lab. So that's why I do tend to overstate that when it comes to respirators because I see people walking around with respirators like I see they say KF94 on them and they're you know with the ear loops they're loosely fit where I can see a big huge gap right here on either side of the nose and there's no point in putting something like that in front of your face if you're just going to be breathing around it. So today's respirator is the first one I'm reviewing that is actually not NIOSH approved and that's because they are seeking approval at this time. So they are selling this on their website. Uh, they're calling it an AA95 filtering face piece respirator and the model number is AA1776. But of course, if you look at cdc.gov to see an NIOSH approval, you won't see this yet, hopefully soon. And normally I wouldn't be inclined to review something like this until, unless they had that approval already. But there are a couple things about it. First, I do trust this company, Armbrust. I, I've reviewed their surgical mask in the past. I'm going to link that here. That surgical mask, which is ASTM level three, so that's the maximum for fluid resistance protection. And when it was tested with the fix the mask, uh, mask fitting device, it tested almost like an N95. I think they have good products. They are all made here in the United States and their products stand up to the scrutiny they need to so far. So I am going to be interested to watch and see whether they get this NIOSH approval. In the meantime, I have a good gut level trust with this company. The other thing that made me want to bring a review to you guys about this is that it is the cup form. It's not the soft foldable respirator. Some people just really like this harder domed cup of a design, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at that. Now on Armbrust's website, these, first of all, right now, last I checked, they were sold out, but I think there's a way that you can put your email address in there and they'll notify you when something is back in stock. These sell for $39.95 for a box of 10, so that's, of course, $3.90 per item. Now, Armbrust does have a code SANDY20. Now, that's not an affiliate link, no commission for me. I don't want the room for bias that commission creates with something like this. I don't want to prey on people's fears, and I don't want to bring a biased review. So I just leverage whatever influence I have to give a discount to my viewers. So that is good for 20% off SANDY20. Now, there are some links in the listing description of this item, and you can click on to see the, what they say are the third-party review stats. And for the particulate filtration, they say everything met a standard of over 98%. Of course, the standard for an N95 is at least 95%. In my experience, most of them perform better. And in fact, theirs, depending on which test, I noticed for particulate filtration ranged anywhere from 99.07 to 99.94. So I really hope that this does well in its laboratory testing and its approval with the um, NIOSH. So when you purchase a box of these, they all come in one 
bag. They're not individually wrapped, but they are wrapped so that they're not just sitting in a cardboard box. Now, they do have some information on their box, which I think is really helpful. I've talked about putting on an N95. The way I've always been taught and the way I do it is I start with the, the top strap goes on first, and then the bottom gets pulled over and put down at the bottom. They are saying to put that in the opposite order. I don't know that it matters that much as long as you make sure that you've got a good fit. We're going to fit test this as best we can. Now, they also do tell you to perform a fit test. The other thing that they do is they put on this side of the box their full disclosure that says this is not an N95 and has not been reviewed by NIOSH. At least 95% filtration efficiency against solid and liquid aerosols that do not contain oil as tested by third-party labs. And they have the part number and tell you about the protection. I do like that. That's a full disclosure piece of information. You know, because when people see a A95, well, what does that mean? Is it an N95, a KF95? I guess in this case, it means that they're waiting and they're hoping for the NILSH approval. I hope they get that. All right, so when I take this out of the box, it does look very different than the ones I've shown before. This is polypropylene. I can feel it. It feels almost like styrofoamy because this is just a very thick um, material. You can see that it is a non-woven. They have their name. They have their model number down here. When you turn it around, you can see they do have this foam. Now, when I reviewed a respirator recently, that was the Demitech. It had this foam here around the nose piece, and I couldn't get a good fit with that particular respirator. It was leaking all over the place, so for me, it really wasn't a respirator. Um, I suspected it was maybe because of the foam, but then when I tore the foam out to the best of my ability, I found it still did that. I really couldn't come up with an explanation other than that it just didn't fit me, and therefore is going to work for me. So we're going to see how this one works. So I'm going to do this the way I know how and the way I've already shown. So this one is the top strap. Now there's not as much work to do with fitting it because it's not a foldable. It's not flimsy. It has, you know, that sturdy design where it's going to pretty much keep its shape. But I am going to do the top first and I position this pretty high on my head, like as high as it will allow me without sliding either forward or back. And then once I have that in place, I'm going to bring this down below. Now, in my case, you can see this is actually pretty loose on me. And I don't see where they make this in sizes. So with, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cross the straps. Did I cross them? Yes, I did. So you can see this one's high because it's, it's going to give me a little more tension. The, the bottom strap doesn't do as much in terms of uh, the heavy lifting. It's really the top one that brings it upward. But in this case, you know, I could just feel that it's it's loose and it, you do, really don't want a strap dangling around because the mask, depending on if you move your head a certain way quickly or whatever, it can move away from your face. So at this point, I'm going to try to get a good fit with that foam under there. I struggle with these deep set eyes and usually what works for me is to bring the whole respirator up high. You know, in this case, there is a pretty large distance here between the top of the respirator and the top of its nose piece. And, you know, being that you want to get the nose seal pretty high up, it means I'm going to bring this up, you know, up high between my eyes. I don't feel leak down below. Let's try. The first thing you do is you take a big deep breath and you exhale. See if you can feel leak coming from anywhere, and I don't. Now I'm going to try it with my safety goggles. I've said before, I don't like to slide glasses or goggles in under the elastic. Once I get this fitted the way I think it's right, I don't want to disrupt it. Even a little bit of tension underneath it can disrupt it, so I gently pull these over. Now I will say that um, one thing about a respirator, this cup dome style, especially if it has to be up high like mine does, uh, it means that my... My glasses are a little bit further away on my face, if that makes sense. There's just a lot of, this is a very thick item compared to some of the other respirators that I've shown. So this is sitting kind of, either I can sit them up high, can't really get them underneath there because I've got a fit there that I don't want to disrupt. So in my case, I'm just going to try it like this. So my goggles are dirty right now. I really need to clean these. I've got smudges and things on them at this point, but I'm definitely not noticing any leak. Now, I do have this high enough that I have to make sure this isn't going to like annoy me on, you know, on my eye or whatever. If I'm going to have these where they are, they're higher than they normally sit on my face. Yeah, but that said, this performs very nicely for me in terms of its fit. So 
you know, this might be a really nice option for people who like this harder dome. It's not going to like move. For the most part, I find that these N95s, even the soft ones, the foldable ones, they're not quite as flimsy as like a surgical mask or something like that. So they do tend to not really suck in at the mouth. They tend to stay a little distance away, but they will move some. And this is something that just you won't feel that movement. So I would recommend, though, that if you're going to purchase something like this, if it's the first time you're using something like this, that you try to get used to it in your home because like I can see now that just the shape of this being something different than I'm used to is forcing me to put my safety goggles in a position that's different than I'm used to. So before I went out and really tested this all over the place and wearing it in a setting where I don't want to have to be adjusting it and things, I, I would definitely wear this in the house for a little while and make sure that I'm used to it and I've got things where I want them to be. Um, that said, this seems to be working very nicely. I would be very surprised if, assuming we can trust the third-party testing information that they offer on the webpage, I, I'd be surprised if this didn't get its NIOSH approval. I don't know how long that process takes, however. And I always do that little water test just to see. I, I, you know, I realize that polypropylene is not 100% watertight, but the kind of polypropylene that we see in these devices, it should be holding water for some time. Now, that said, if I left this overnight with water in it, eventually this side would be wet because the polypropylene would break down. But that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to see if it, you know, holds water like it should. And certainly, you know, I've got a half a glass of water in here now. I wish I could show you without spilling it all over the place, but I am going to turn it around. I don't want to have to pour it over that nose band, and I am going to pour it back in my glass. And yeah, this side is completely dry. This side obviously has some wetness to it. Hey, it all feels like it's on the surface, you know, just like the water would bead up on here if I put just a drop. So I hope this passes the test and receives its NIOSH approval because I think this might be a really nice option for people who like this uh, more sturdy feel dome that it's really kind of away from your nose and mouth. Now, that said, the trade-off is, like I said here, your nose piece is, there, there's quite a bit of distance here between the nose piece and the top of the mask. And, you know, in my case, with a very petite face, uh, that means that I've got my this mask pretty high up here, and given how thick this is and the, the dome, how far it's coming out away from my face, it just amounts to a kind of a congested area right in here, and that's why I had to place my goggles in a way that they're not normally, I'm not wearing them. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, and in my opinion, if this is something that you prefer, like this harder dome, uh, I think that's actually a very reasonable trade-off. And I will definitely use these. Now, for me, and I would think for anybody who's maybe on the more petite size, I would say that this uh, bottom strap is quite long. So I've got this uh, Indiana face mask respirator that I reviewed already, and I'm just going to show you here just as a... You can see this. Here's the bottom strap from the Indiana Face Mask Company, and here's the bottom strap from the Armbrust AA95. So I don't know why they made this that generous. It seems like this is extremely generous, and almost nobody would need it that long. But, uh, you know, that said, there's nothing wrong with bringing it up higher on your head and crossing them. Just do your fit test and see how it works. So in the meantime, I would like to say thanks again for the ongoing coupon code for Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy viewers with Armbrust at 20% off Sandy20. So so let me know if you guys try any of these or let me know if you're waiting to find out if they get that NILSH approval. And let me know if this was helpful. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.